Hey everyone, welcome back once again. So, we're back in a good old caddy van. As promised last week, I said that we're going to be doing the caddy videos in a two part series. So, last week we spoke about more about what the caddies look like, what the modifications and stuff that we can offer that we can do to them. Whereas this week, we're going to be taking them out for a drive. As I said, we're going to be talking more about what caddies are like to live with what they like to drive. Well as that, there are like a few engine choices. There's a lot of different things that you can choose in regards to buying a caddy. So we're also gonna talk about that. We're gonna take three different caddy vans out for a drive. We're gonna start out in the one that we started with last week. So the white 2014 Maxi, which is a 1.6 diesel. We're also gonna take out a two litre diesel and then we're gonna take out the 1.4 TSI petrol van that we also saw in last week's episode. Without further ado, Let's just get into the driving. To start with, I think I always choose the world's like sunniest and brightest bloody day to film these videos. But at the same time, it does also look like it's going to shut it down. So it's a gamble, who knows? What is it actually like to own one of these vans? I'm also going to compare the three of them to a van that I own, which is my beautiful 2011 uh, for Transit Connect. So that van I have owned about a year. Yeah, it'll be a year. We used, I used to use it for my old job and I've ended up keeping it and we are going to be selling it. But obviously I've got to know that van quite well and I would say that the Connect is one of the caddy vans like top rivals almost. Like when you think of like a small van, you think of a Transit Connect or you think of a Volkswagen Caddy. Um, and obviously they are two very popular choices and I'm going to talk about why if you are in the market for a small van why you should 100% go for a Volkswagen Caddy instead of a Ford Transit Connect. So let's start with the one thing that the Caddy absolutely blows most of its competition out of the window with and that is how much so annoying <laughs> how much these are like to drive a car so driving one of these is 100% the most car like in terms of a van that you can get despite the size like obviously this one's a maxi it literally doesn't feel like you're driving anything else than just a normal car and I think that is 100% why they are so like appealing to people who want them as a daily car because I can tell you now I can 1001% not daily drive our Transit Connect it is just not a nice car van to drive whereas these as soon as you get in them you're like oh wow like, I don't feel like I'm driving a van at all which is 100% true even though this one is a maxi so it's a lot longer and it is big like it's a big van yeah it, it does literally just feel like you're driving a car and obviously in here it looks exactly like your normal Volkswagen this one that we're driving at the minute is a 1.6 diesel now a lot of them like a lot of the Mark 3 caddies are 1.6ers um, and I know there's a little bit of a stigma around the whole like injection issue which is something that we are going to touch on so obviously it, you can't talk about a Volkswagen caddy without talking about you know the infamous injector issue that they do come with you hear you probably hear about all the horror stories of people you know they buy the vans they drive it a mile down the road the injectors just give all the car the van goes into limp mode you know everyone's crying everyone's in tears even your mom your nan everyone's in tears we don't shy away from that problem here uh, we fully acknowledge it and we know that it is you know an issue that comes with these vans and we always say as blunt as it sounds it really is a look of the draw when it comes to these injectors we've seen vans that can go 200,000 miles with no issues we've seen vans that can do 10,000 miles and you know all four injectors have to be replaced and obviously it's quite scary because it's not cheap it is quite an expensive you know fix but it, it's one of them that it's really hard to make a judgment on so the 1.6s are slightly more prone to having this injector issue as opposed to the two litre diesel but obviously the mark 3s the 1.6 is a lot more common that could be something that plays in your mind whether you want to, to go for a mark 3 or a mark 4 helps if you go in gear when you're trying to set off but going back to my transit connect the same sort of thing applies in the sense that the cam belt in one of the, the you know the 1.9 tdi is a wet belt 
so it's a real pain in the ass to change it's really not fun to do every mechanic hates doing it who we've ever spoke to and then where a lot of people just kind of fob it off they're kind of just like do oh, you know what i'll just avoid it the cam belt slips the engine goes and then same again it's another expensive fix so it's not like the caddies have only the only ones with issues a lot of vans have issues but less about that let's talk about what the 1.6 is actually like to drive it's coming all different types of brake horsepower there's three different like brake horsepower figures that you can get out of these so you've got a 75 brake horsepower which does is one of the 1.6s but you've also got a 1.6 which can put out 101 brake horsepower which is weird because that's exactly the same figure as what one of the two litre diesels can put out strange like the same amount of power from a two litre diesel to a 1.6 diesel bizarre but that is that's how it is this one is a 101 brake horsepower model so this is like one of the more punchy versions of the 1.6 when i was like heard that you could get like a 1.6 in the caddy i was like surely that's not going to be enough but pleasantly surprised like it really is it's super punchy like i said um there's plenty of torque behind you and it's not like painfully slow but saying that there also is a massive difference between the 1.6 diesel and the 2 litre diesel like when you get the 2 litre one you're like oh god yeah a lot more responsive like it's a lot more there obviously not everybody wants to drive around in a big 2 litre diesel some people do just want a 1.6 diesel um, and that's absolutely fine like there's nothing wrong with it it's a really really great engine we'll do a little test here of what it's like so we're at 45 that's just hit 60 in fourth gear in what like a few seconds so like i said it's got plenty of punch to it in terms of miles per gallon is it not doing anything i know it's because i'm just being stupid and i can't work out what the buttons do but um i will get the mpg figures what i will say about these caddies is they have like a really small fuel tank so you can put like 15 pound in which is not a lot and it'll go up to like a quarter of a tank and like when I've my, in my car, the fuel tank is massive, like 15 pounds in like a tiny little bit. So to see it go up like that, it's like, oh my God. But yeah, obviously the fuel needle does go down. So it looks like that it's really bad on fuel because the, the needle is constantly going down, but it's actually just that it's got a really small fuel tank. Do a little cheeky second gear pull. I went straight from 10 mile an hour to 40 mile an hour, just in that gear. So like I said, Got some poke. Would you look at that as if by bloody magic we are now in a Mark IV two litre diesel? So this is 2016, so yes, it's a Mark IV, um, and this one's a two litre diesel. So I'm in the Mark IV because, as I mentioned, most of the Mark III's are 1.6 diesels, most of the Mark IV's are two litre diesels. This was the first one I could find. <laughs> That wasn't in a really awkward spot it was going to take me four hours to get it out so we're in this one quickly going to run through obviously what the difference mainly between this 1.6 and also a couple of other key points which i might have not mentioned before bloody magic as well not only are we in a different caddy but it's also started raining i told you it was going to rain it was beautiful sunshine a minute ago so, first of all yes you can tell a difference between the 1.6 and the two litre diesel uh, quite a noticeable difference actually um, this one has definitely got a lot more punch it's definitely got a lot more torque uh, which you would expect from a higher engine but as mentioned before it's got about the same amount of power it's more the torque that you notice if anything um, it picks up a little bit better picks up a little bit faster um, obviously if you're after something that you are going to want to pull a bit more weight with um, or you are necessarily you want something a little bit nippier then yeah i would recommend going for one of the two litre diesels it's worth mentioning at this point we do also offer remapping on these cars so i'm going to pull up the figures now on the screen of what we can get out of these caddies because caddies is one of the most popular ones that we do tend to you know have the remapping done on you do get a lot of benefits out of it such as better miles per gallon believe it or not i know that sounds bizarre but on a lot of diesel you will actually get better miles per gallon obviously we do also get increased power you also get an increased torque ratings now another thing worth mentioning i'm driving currently a manual which is what a lot of caddies are a lot of them are manual but 
you can get automatic fans, which I know is a huge selling point to a lot of people because some people really just don't like driving manual. So having the option to have these caddies in an automatic is huge. And not only is it an automatic, a lot of them are DSG, which is obviously like the big Volkswagen automatic, which is super good. I can, I've driven, I think I've driven two now that are automatic. They are so nice to drive, like it's so easy and effortless. Obviously that is the whole point of an automatic, but it is really nice to have that option in a van. We don't get them in very often, don't get, get me wrong, they're not as common as the manuals, but they are out there um, and we can source these vans for you. So if you ring us up and say, I, look, I want this, 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 we can try our best to source one of those vans for you. But same again, it's just so nice to drive. It's so like car-like. I don't feel like I'm really stupidly high up. Like, I don't feel like I'm driving a van. Even though the wing mirrors are huge, like, still, I don't feel like I'm driving a van. It is very basic, but in terms of a van, it is a really nice place to be. And, like, driving this in comparison to a car, tell that much difference. And especially, I think a massive thing, um, like, that I would 100% recommend having in these vans is a bulkhead. Obviously, unless you have the five seats, bulkheads are like a game changer. If you don't have one of them in, you can hear everything rattling around in the back. But with one in, it's so quiet and it's so nice. But like I said, if you have one with five seats, then fear not. I would then 100% recommend, you know, going through the sound deadening and carpeting route. Because once you carpet, sound deaden, insulate, all that jazz, um, it is really quiet in the back as well. Uh, but obviously if you have it as a work van, I would 100% recommend having one of the bulkheads because this one is a full bulkhead here and literally I can't hear anything in the back. Right, so four mile an hour, foot down. 60, there we go. A lot more torque, but in terms of like actual speed, I don't see like a huge difference between the 1.6 and the 2 litre. But I did go in a two litre that had been remapped and that was like so, like it really took me by surprise. It was fast, well not fast obviously, but like it was quick. I said recommend maybe getting a remap on one of these if speed is something that is gonna bother you. Um, but if it's talk that you're after, same again, either go for a remap or definitely go for the two litre diesel. As if by magic, it's two days later. <laughs> it's probably the biggest gap between jumping from a car to car that you've ever seen, but uh, this car actually was still having some prep work done, so I couldn't actually take it out on the same day. Um, but it's two days later, it's back, it's here. It's the 1.4 TSI petrol caddy. Now this is the most exciting one, I think out of the whole three, well, yeah, the whole three that we've been looking at. Um, and A, because it's super rare, you do not see many of these caddies at all. Yes, they do exist. Um, and this is the 1.4 TSI engine that you might see in the Polos or the Golfs. It's the same engine, but it's in a van. So when I first saw that it was obviously 1.4 petrol, I thought, what? Like, how is that gonna work in a van? Obviously you think of a van as big diesel that's got a lot of torque so that it can pull all of the stuff that you need in the back. But I think this petrol, obviously appeals to a whole other market that might need a van because not everybody that wants a van needs it for lugging big things around and you know pulling a load of weight some people do just want a van for the practicality reasons diesel isn't always necessarily practical yes diesels can be a pain so they can be a pain for a number of reasons one being obviously like dpfs dpfs always become an issue and if you don't know what DPF is, it's called diesel particulate filter. That's basically what filters all of the bad stuff out of your diesel exhaust. They can often get clogged, and they can get clogged for a number of reasons, like doing just constant short journeys, not really allowing the car to, you know, fully stretch its legs. And as a result, it gets clogged up, your diesel goes into limp mode, and then you, you laugh, you sat there and you're like, oh, for God's sake. This is like the perfect example. You've still got exactly the same van. This is exactly the same as any other Mark 4 caddy, but it's got a petrol engine. I will say as well, it's really, really nice. Like it doesn't struggle at all pulling the van. Um, you would think that a little tiny engine like this it would you know, have a little bit of bother, but it doesn't, it doesn't have any trouble at all. It's about 120 brake horsepower. So it is a TSI, so it is turboed. 
um, and it sounds amazing. So this particular one has a little bit of an aftermarket exhaust on, which you can probably hear. It sounds very, very, very nice. It's very like throaty. It doesn't sound like really, doesn't sound like an angry wasp in a tin can, which is what I describe some aftermarket exhaust sounding like. And it's also really punchy. So it has obviously turboed. It's not just a 1.4 NA. It has got a little turbo on there. And it's like, it's really fun to drive. It's definitely got some kick to it. I'm not saying it's like, absolutely rapid or anything no but it has definitely got some kick to it which is fun like it's nice to have that in a van instead of just the noisy sluggish diesels surprised uh, like the diesels aren't that amazing as you would think because you know they are the kind of engine where you do have to rev it quite a lot to get the power out of it so to be honest I wouldn't say there would be a massive difference between the miles per gallons this one might be a little bit lower yeah diesels aren't necessarily like a million million miles ahead in terms of being better see that little turbo kicks in quite fast I'm just at like two and a half at the minute, just put foot down. As soon as I got to three, you can feel like the little turbo kick in. And it's nippy, it's fun, I like it. It would literally appeal to a whole new market of people who would want this as just an everyday, you know, you can just nip into the shops, you can do whatever you want to do. It's just like a normal car engine, but you've got the practicality of a van, especially like this one when you've got five seats in the back. It's just perfect. Like this really is the type of like, I feel like personally, I don't know whether I would like want to daily drive one of these, but this one, I could 100,000% daily drive this thing because it's just good. Definitely, uh, definitely go and test drive one of the 1.4s because you might be surprised because I most definitely was. So that concludes our look through of the three engine caddies. So obviously we started with the 1.6 diesel, moved on to the 2 litre diesel, and now we've obviously had a little go in the 1.4 TSI. My favourite is the 1.4. Between the diesels, I think I would definitely go for the 2 litre, just because it, it does have a little bit more going for it than the 1.6, but that's not taken away from the 1.6. It is still a great engine for those vans. Um, there isn't a huge difference between the two, but they either or, they are great little, they are great little vans, like you can't deny it. I was saying between my Connect and the Caddy. The Caddy is miles and miles and miles ahead of the Connect. You are in the market for a van. You've got to go for a Caddy. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you next week and we'll see what we've got lined up for then.